let's get into kind of what Colorado was coming into this game. And overall, the real effect that Coach Prime has had on this team already. If you haven't been tapped into Deion Sanders going from Jackson State to Colorado, this video will kind of give you a synopsis of, excuse me, or rather this segment of the podcast will kind of give you a synopsis of really what his work has done for him so far. So you look coming into this game, Colorado won one game all of last year. They hadn't had a 300-yard passer since 2019, maybe 2020. They were underdogs by 20 and a half points on the road with a brand new team. Again, in front of a record crowd of people. This is the biggest crowd TCU ever had, 53,294 people. That's how many fans were in that stadium for the debut of Colorado on the road. Colorado was a horrible team last year. They lost by an average of 29 points, by far the worst in the country. There was no team in the country worse than giving up points and losing by as many points as the Colorado Buffaloes were last year. It was the fourth worst amongst, excuse me, fourth worst among Power 5 programs in the past three decades. And they snapped a 27-game losing streak to AP Top 20 teams with this win against TCU. 86 new players from all over. We're we're talking about from JUCO to high school to the SEC. 53, which is the first in the FBS. 53 transfers here for Deion Sanders. Nine of them followed him from Jackson State. Of course, Shador Sanders, who is his son, Colorado's starting quarterback. You got Travis Hunter, very highly touted prospect, number two in the country. Again, that player playing the wide receiver and the cornerback, um, top, you know, top recruit in the 2022 class. But this was the most incoming players to an FBS roster since the inception of the transfer portal in 2018. And only 10 players from last season actually remained with this team. So Dion had a lot of unfamiliarity. Dion had a lot of roster stripping to do. He had a lot of literally breaking it down to the damn studs to restructure a 1-11 football team that had their head coach fired halfway through his third season last year. And again, led the country in losing by, uh, excuse me, in the amount of points that they lost by on average. And again, this team was horrible, horrible, horrible over the last 20 years. Shadur Sanders, excuse me, Deion Sanders rather, put this school on the map. You have a historic number of players that have transferred in and out. Season tickets are sold out. Merchandise sales have spiked for this team. Take a listen to this. With sales of Colorado gear in December, which is the month that Deion Sanders was hired, they were up 505% over the previous year. Five times the amount of people were coming in to buy Colorado merchandise simply because of the hire of Deion Sanders. The grit, Dion is a winner wherever he goes. He has a very business NFL cutthroat-like mentality because he has performed at the highest level and just got handed over to a program who was not nearly reporting at uh, performing at the highest level. They came out so hard for Coach Prime before this game even. April 22nd of this year, the day after a snowstorm in Colorado, nearly 50,000 people went to the home stadium to watch Coach Prime's first spring game. This was the first snap of Coach Prime's career with the Colorado Buffaloes. The crowd, y'all, the crowd for a spring game was bigger than all but two of the team's regular season home games from last year. And this was the first time they even sold tickets to this game literally since the 70s. In almost 50 years, they never gave a shit about the spring game. They had the third largest home crowd on hand for Dion's first spring game. Only two home games from last year. And I'd probably like to believe maybe that was an opener and maybe one soon after that. The fans only in those two games outmatched the spring game. So the Dion effect is on full display here. These guys were coming out early. These guys were coming out often. And when you look at the total situation is a perfect storm. For a one-of-a-kind coach in Dion, no question about that, an overhaul of the NCAA rules and a program desperate for respectability at the end of the day. Perfect storm with the coach. The NCAA rules have been switched around some to be in his favor so he can break down and rebuild a roster and a program that had not meant anything, again, for the last two decades. There's no doubt that Deion Sanders, a.k.a. Primetime, was a winner everywhere he went. NFL Defensive Player of the Year, back-to-back Super Bowl champion, one of the best athletes, let alone defensive backs and kick returners of all time, the only athlete to win, excuse me, to play in a Super Bowl and World Series ever. He's 
He's in the College Football and the NFL Hall of Fame. He's a two-time SWAC champion while coaching for JSU last year, excuse me, Jackson State University last year. He was a two-time SWAC coach of the year at Jackson State. He's got a 27-7 and record as a head coach, and he was a two-time unanimous All-American at FSU. Do I need to tell you any more of Deion Sanders' resume for you to understand how much of a winner he is, for you to understand the mentality that he's putting into these kids, how these kids actually get him, how he's literally on the Pat McAfee show in interviews talking about how he wants to get these kids to the league. These kids want to play for Deion Sanders. They follow Deion Sanders. Deion wants to shed the light on the part of the HBCU or really the, yes, the part of the HBCU that does not get any recognition. He wants to lift those kids up. He wants to get into a program like Colorado and let you know that he's coming, just like he said in the postgame presser. He's a winner. He's a winner. He's a damn winner. And he is displaying that right now with Colorado because he knows how this game works on a mental level at the highest level because he's performed at such. He knew it was going to be a huge overhaul that really had to be done fast and efficiently. And he's telling last year's players, literally go ahead and jump in the transfer portal. If you don't, if you think you don't want to be here, whatever the case may be, I'm inviting you to go jump into it because there's going to be a lot of changes this coming year. He's got the cutthroat, unapologetic business-like approach to really an awful program again for the last two decades. He's prepping these kids for the NFL, and, and that's really not hard to see. And he's really implementing that inner Bobby Bowden, Mickey Andrews from FSU days, the defensive coordinator at FSU for the better part of Bobby Bowden's tenure there. Now, some reports say that the roster overhaul was personal, felt like he was attacking the team, but others knew that it was needed. Again, this was a team that won one football game last year. They went 1-11. and He's taking advantage of the modern NCAA rules, and no one should hate him for it because now he's allowed to build a program and a roster. He's literally bringing kids out of the HBCUs and the lowlights of the NCAA, not saying HBCUs are lowlights of NCAA, but we know the coverage for them is not nearly as respectable as the other conferences. The HBCUs are loaded with talent. Unfortunately, they don't get to the league, but prime example of Shannon Sharp, who did just make his debut today on first take, him and Stephen A going back and forth about them being from HBCU. So you have to respect what Prime is doing for the game. These kids literally want to go out and play for him. And some differences about Coach Prime, you know, people people hear, hear him say some of these things. You know, he's like, what is culture? He says players don't have to like one another. They just have to play well together. They don't need unity. You just need good players. Uh, he doesn't believe in captains on the jerseys. This is what I like a lot. He doesn't believe in captains on the jerseys. He puts a D for dog or an L for leader. He's speaking right to these kids. You've heard, if, if you hear some of the younger generation, of, I'm 25, some part of the younger generation, I say it as well. Oh, that guy's a dog. He's an absolute dog. He plays like a dog. He is a dog at his position. Absolute stud, uh, an absolute star. But then you also have leaders. Not every dog is a leader like Dion said, and not every leader is a dog. Not everybody's built to lead, built to coach, built to mentor. He said he doesn't believe in the C on the jersey for the captains. He thinks that's that's a little foolish, which I don't think it's foolish, but when you dig into the overall, literally when you dig into the overall just mindset of Prime and you hear him talk about these things, it, it really makes sense as to why he's got this kid's attention overall um, and, and why Colorado was able to play as well as they did. And not to mention, they paid him $29.5 million, which was the most ever to a Colorado coach to sign him, and that was before bonuses. You got to respect Colorado's odds starting up for the national championship, too, for Shadur to win Heisman, for Travis Hunter to possibly win the Heisman. Shadur Sanders went from 100 to 1 odds to 28 to 1 odds to win the Heisman. Travis Hunter went from 80 to 1 odds to 22 to 1 odds. So essentially, both of them got. Uh, about four times better odds after this game in order to take home the Heisman. The national championship odds, if I'm not mistaken for Colorado, when they opened the year, it was 300 to one. Now they've gotten three times as better and they fall into 100 to one, if I'm not mistaken. And just more numbers on this. This was the most bet on game of the weekend by far. Only six games from last season had more bets than this game. There were more bets and more money placed on the Buffaloes to win the entire national championship than any other team over the weekend. Vegas is going a little crazy here, of course, but by the end of Saturday's game, more bets had been placed at FanDuel on Shador Sanders and Travis Hunter to win the Heisman Trophy than any other player in the country. So clearly this game moved mountains for people that were really looking at Colorado. It really made the numbers spike up. It made Vegas start to think, wow, 
Prime's overhaul of this roster, the way that these players just played four receivers over 100 yards, looking at Dylan Edwards at the running back position, looking at Coach Prime's accomplishments as he steps into Colorado, it's absolutely undeniable. So let's take a look at some of their best games of the season before we take a look at the NFL season opener preview. So they play Nebraska, excuse me, they play Nebraska next. And before beating TCU, they were actually almost a touchdown underdog to Nebraska when the odds came out. I think they do them just a couple weeks ahead. Now they are literally two and a half point favorites just under a field goal stepping into that game. And the hype is really at an all time high right now for Colorado. But I want to see how they perform in their home opener of the season, which clearly looks promising. Nebraska looks rough against Minnesota, especially offensively. So then you go on to number 15, Oregon on September 23rd on the road. You turn right around and play Caleb Williams, probably the number one pick in the draft. And number six, USC, right after um, on September 30th at home, which is very good for Coach Prime there. Clearly, that's a, um, an advantage to him. And that will probably be one of the most watched games of the year, Shador Sanders and Caleb Williams going tit for tat. And I think that game will be a great chance for Shador Sanders to really improve his draft, his draft stock. And again, another nationally televised game, just like it was against TCU. You know this one with USC is going to be front and center, so it's going to be a great one to watch. November 4th, they play number 16, Oregon State, at home. They finish the season with number 14, Utah, on the road. These games, especially the USC game, will be highly counted for with Colorado. Again, they're going to play number 15, Oregon. They're going to play number 6, USC. They're going to play number 16, Oregon State, number 14, Utah. Nebraska's up next. I think they can win that game possibly comfortably just with how the offense looked um, of Colorado versus how the offense of Nebraska looked as well. But it's going to be interesting to see as these defense come in through the season because the hype is at an all-time high now. How big can the hype bubble get for the for Colorado before they realistically do have it popped? Um, because at the end of the day, I see about a 9-11 to 11 win football team right now with the Colorado Buffaloes. And again, I love what Shador Sanders did. D, um, excuse me. Shador Sanders looked great. Shiloh Sanders looked excellent. You had an interception from Travis Hunter. You had him on the receiving side of the ball. Four receivers, over 100 yards. It, it was one of the best college football games that the world has witnessed in a long time. And the fact that Vegas jumped on it as hard as they did, we know odds and numbers move all the time with every game, with every play, with every season, right? But even Vegas realizes what's happening here. Coach Prime said on the Pat McAfee show, he referenced the little engine that could. Very simple elementary book. He said it was favorite book next to the Bible. And of course, the engine said, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can. And Dion says, I don't think that I can do things. I know I can do things. I'm not jumping on the Colorado National Championship hype train yet but it definitely has things warranting towards it. And you can say again what you want to say about them playing TCU. This was a statement win for a piss-poor program over the last 20 years with a new coach, with a new quarterback, 86 new players. A college football roster only has 105 players. Over 80% of their roster was brand new. 10 people. Only 10 people from last season had familiarity with just Colorado in general let alone Deion Sanders. What a overhaul. What a game. What a way that Coach Prime <clears throat> has actually come in and just taken this take taken this program, uh, not to this height, because of course it's just one game, but gotten this program to be this effective this quick. Love what I'm seeing. Dion, keep doing great things. Shadur Sanders, I've definitely got my eyes on you. I knew you were a baller, man, no doubt. But now that you're getting that chance on the national stage, now that you're getting that chance in a Power 5 conference, by the way, the Pac-12 over the weekend went undefeated, absolutely crazy. Now that you're getting the chance to showcase that, I'm happy for you, man. I'm happy for Colorado. I cannot wait to see what they do as the season goes 